Welcome back. Just a few hours ago, President Trump leaving for his first overseas trip as commander in chief. He will travel to Israel, the Vatican, Brussels, but his first stop will be longtime U.S. ally Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia has been criticized as the center of Islamist extremist ideology and as a backer of terrorism overseas. Now, the president says he plans to encourage the Muslim world to, quote, fight hatred, hatred and extremism. He plans to make a major speech on this. He's also going to say, put a stop to radical Islamic terrorism. Now, we know that's a phrase President Obama never used, and President Trump frequently criticized Obama for not using that statement. With me now, Dr. Zudi Jasser. He's the president of the American Islamic Forum for Democracy. Good to see you, doctor. Thank you. It's good it to be with you, Liz. Same here. It looks like the president is taking a bold, historic stand, coming out forcefully in a country, though, that outlaws criticism of the government and Islam, no. Is, and Islam, isn't that right? Isn't that what's going on? It is. I, you know, I think this is so long overdue. And the problem is, is he has so much time to make up. We lost eight years where we sort of gave up the Middle East. So he has, one, a short-term goal, which is to shore up our Sunni allies that long relied on us against the bulwark of Iran, if you will. And we have had this Iranophilia from the Obama administration that has basically given them free reign to decimate Syria, to arm Hezbollah, and globally spread their ideas. So now he has to reestablish that alliance with the Saudis, Egyptians, Jordanians, and the Sunni side of that equation, if you will. But more so in the long term, I hope he starts speaking truth to power, as he did in America against the establishment. He needs to speak against that Islamist establishment in the belly of the beast, which is Saudi Arabia. Even though it's only 25 million people, it is the center of petro-Islamic spread of ideologies across the globe. And I hope, finally, they will meet a president that is not afraid to tell them, you know what? Islamist terror originates here. The founding fathers of ISIS are the Saudis. President Trump is expected to make his speech before more than four dozen Muslim leaders in Saudi Arabia. He's, he's apparently going to say he wants to unite the civilized world to eradicate radical Islamic terrorism from the face of the earth in favor of a moderate version of Islam. Um, now, to your point, what would you tell the president to tell uh, these Muslim leaders in Saudi Arabia? What would you advise him to say? You know what, I, I, Liz, I would tell him to say two things. One is that he tell these leaders and governments that we will decimate ISIS militarily with their governments. But then the second thing, he speak past the tyrannical governments and he speak to the Muslims in the streets, the Muslims in the prisons that are trying to, free, to speak freely, the women's groups that are ignored and marginalized in Saudi Arabia. Because this is very different than Obama's speech of 2009 when the Arab awakening had not happened. Now we've seen many governments turn over because of large revolutions in Egypt, Yemen, in Libya, Saudi, you know, not Saudi Arabia, they've been able to hold it back, but in Syria, etc. So he needs to speak to those people and say, our allies are those Muslims who share our values right. and we will help them modernize their ideology to come into compatibility with the 21st century rather than 12th and 13th century law that exists in countries like Saudi Arabia. You know, Arabia. there's no small irony when the president, President Obama went on the first trip over there. He made, you know, he apologized, his apologies tour in Saudi Arabia to the Muslim world, where he said, we've been wrong, the United States has been wrong. And then President Obama proceeded to make all these mistakes about not supporting the green movement the, in uh, Iran, the Arab awakening or his, you know, crossing the red line uh, statement in Syria. President Obama made so many mistakes in the Middle East when he was at the, at the outset saying, oh, the U.S. has been wrong. So there's irony there. But President Trump's his, his decision to make Saudi Arabia the first stop on his trip. Uh, again, it's been criticized as one of the biggest sponsors of Islamic terror. You bring up women's rights. You bring up all of those important issues, doctor. What do you think that how the monarchy, how will the monarchy take what he's going to say? Well, listen, I'm the son of Syrian immigrants, and I, one of the things I really understand well is Arab tribalism. And they do not respond to appeasement and weakness. What they respond to is strength and leadership. So we don't have to coddle them. Actually, what the Arab tribal leaders, like the king of Saudi Arabia, respect and will step back from is a president who tells them, you know what? You have a problem, which is political Islam, not just radical Islam, but political Islam. And you need to begin real reformation, not just window dressing, but real reformation. And I think that will go a long way to not only being a message to the people on the ground, just like Reagan gave messages to 
prisoners in the Soviet Union, etc., but also being a message that we will hold them accountable to a long-term solution. Oh, by the way, we're going to be handing them hundreds of billions of dollars in, right. in, in weapons, etc. So I don't think they're going to be upset with a little strong talk on the need for reform, we know, which will also hear well with the people. With people who are not Muslim, uh, you know, uh, many people out there see it as a religion, um, not of peace, but of, of war, of jihad. Uh, should the president address that? Absolutely. You know, I think he should, uh, and I hope he reaches out to Muslim reformers. Our Muslim reform movement is ready to advise on how to articulate that, that the problem is not that we're, we're attacking all of Islam, but the Islamists, that jihadism needs to be put into the dustbin of history, that the Islamic State of ISIS is not an aberration, that any time you have an Islamic Republic, be it Saudi Arabia, Iran, it is going to be motivated by jihad. So you have to begin to bring Islam into modernity. And he needs to contextualize where his presidency, where our world is today in a time in history, and Islam is in that time in history that Christianity was in the 15th, 16th, 17th century, in which it needs to fight theocracy. And unfortunately, the king and other jurists that will be there are the theocrats that are the problem. So he needs to show them that we will not ignore that fact. Dr. Zudi Jasser, you're always terrific. We love having you on the show. Come back soon, okay? Anytime. Thanks, Liz. Now, uh,